All across the historical timeline, there are anomalies that don't fit our understanding. Why is that? We are told that the history of our people started at Mesopotamia and Egypt almost simultaneously, though there are things in existence that completely ridicule this expectation. Why though, you have to wonder, are we forced to believe that one moment we are hunter-gatherer tribes, people living in caves, and the next moment we are building the most sophisticated structures in existence, even to this day? It does appear that sites like Puma Punku or Easter Island are showing the effects of something cataclysmic. This site at Puma Punku is incredibly anomalous in so many ways. Think about this. At this site, we are witness to something that was in complete ruins, total destruction, as if at one profound moment an event occurred that destroyed this entire site. But what happened and when did it happen? There are plenty of theories as to what took place right around 12,500 years ago. We have solar flares and coronal mass ejections from the sun potentially causing destruction. Remember the Carrington effect. Can you imagine if that happened today? 160 years ago on September 2nd, 1859, a solar storm on the sun sent highly charged particles racing towards the earth before slamming into the western hemisphere leaving the United States, Canada, and Europe without any communications. Not only this, but widespread fires were ignited as telegraph poles and other technologies of the day were completely overwhelmed by the sudden burst from the sun. British Royal Astronomer Richard Carrington had witnessed a massive Earth-facing solar flare the day before which he described as like a whip cracking and recoiling. This sighting marked the beginning of the study of solar flares and space weather phenomenon as a whole. Of course, if this event took place today, it would cripple the entire planet. Everything and anything would be affected, from your cell phone to your car alarm. Everything with even the slightest hint of electricity running through it, including battery-powered objects, would no longer be of use and the estimated cost to keep society from collapsing would be a massively collective cost that would involve all the resources from all over the world's countries. An unprecedented situation, but a very real and possible one. These flares are just missing us all the time. One day it will occur again. That is inevitable. Could a similar type of event have happened tens of thousands of years ago? Yes. There is every likelihood that at some point a civilization was brought to its knees by these events. Remember, this is an uncontrollable force, something that can't be stopped. If it happens, there's nothing we can do about it. We do consider that if Earth ever faced an extinction level event like an asteroid or comet on a collision course with Earth, our confidence to save the planet from this type of scenario is glorified by Hollywood. Why? Well, because these are the types of scenarios where we can do something within our power to save our people and the planet. These are the situations where we can use our intelligence as a people for the benefit of all humankind. And perhaps we have saved our people from such event in the past by means of leaving and returning under safer circumstances. Maybe, just maybe. When the event of 1859 took place, we were obviously a lot less technological than we are today, which makes the likelihood that this will happen even more terrifying. During the Carrington event, electrons swept up debris of every kind in the magnetic current and coursed along telegraph wires. When they met an obstacle, like the hand of a telegraph operator, they crashed through it, delivering a sharp shock. Papers and telegraph offices caught fire. Even with batteries disconnected, operators found the giddy subatomic stream could carry their messages over vast distances. Lights danced in the sky as the Aurora Borealis mesmerized onlookers across the world as people were in disbelief at the events that were unfolding. It was the largest solar storm ever recorded. If it happened today, it would jeopardize global telecommunications, knocking out orbiting satellites, and leave whole cities burning in darkness. We'd have some warning. Instruments all over the world and in space now monitor the sun every second of the day. But even at the speed of light, a massive solar flare's telltale flash of radiation would leave humanity between just a few minutes and, if we were lucky, a day to prepare for the wave of charged particles surging towards us through space. 
In recent times, we have had these reminders. In 1989, a large-scale event interrupted communication and control of several satellites, disrupted radio transmissions, and tripped the circuit breakers in Hydro-Quebec's power grid, leaving millions without electricity. Researchers in India, the United Arab Emirates, and the United States examined the sun's active regions and magnetic features that sometimes produces solar flares. They used machine learning to characterize magnetic field features in active regions before and after major flares to try to identify patterns that could improve understanding and prediction of flares, something to this day we are still learning about all the time. In 2012, another major event was captured with our new technologies monitoring the sun constantly. At 4.51 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time on Monday, April 2nd, 2001, the sun unleashed the biggest solar flare ever recorded, as observed by the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory SHOHO satellite. The flare was definitely more powerful than the famous solar flare of March 6, 1989, which was related to the disruption of power grids in Canada. This recent explosion from the active region near the sun's northwest limb hurled a coronal mass ejection into space at a whopping speed of roughly 7.2 million kilometers per hour. Luckily, the flare was not aimed directly towards Earth. Solar flares, among the solar system's mightiest eruptions, are tremendous explosions in the atmosphere of the sun capable of releasing as much energy as a billion megatons of TNT. Caused by the sudden release of magnetic energy, in just a few seconds, flares can accelerate solar particles to very high velocities, almost to the speed of light, and heat solar material to tens of millions of degrees. Solar ejections are often associated with flares and sometimes occur shortly after the flare explosion. Coronal mass ejections are clouds of electrified magnetic gas weighing billions of tons ejected from the sun and hurled into space with speeds ranging from 12 to 1250 miles per second. Depending on the orientation of the magnetic fields carried by the ejection cloud, Earth-directed coronal mass ejections cause magnetic storms by interacting with the Earth's magnetic field, distorting its shape and accelerating electrically charged particles, electrons, and atomic nuclei trapped within. Severe solar weather is often heralded by dramatic aurora displays, northern and southern lights, and magnetic storms that occasionally affect satellites, radio communications, and power systems. The flare and solar ejection has also generated a storm of high-velocity particles, and the number of particles with 10 million electron volts and energy in the space near Earth is now 10,000 times greater than normal. The increase of particles at this energy level still poses no appreciable hazard to air travelers, astronauts, or satellites, and the NOAA SEC rates this radiation storm as a moderate S2 to S3 on a scale that goes to S5. It's not a question of if this will ever cause major problems, it's a question of where and when and what can we do to prepare and attempt to safeguard everything we have built up? It is unclear if such a cataclysm would end life as we know it. But one thing is for sure, and that is that if it happened today, not millions, but billions of us would be gravely affected. It must be said, however, that this event is only disturbing the Earth as a result of our presence here. Everything that gets harmed is man-made. The Earth itself is completely unaffected. In fact, if all of our technology did not exist here, then this would actually be a beautiful event to behold. But we live with fear because of our technologies. Ironic, right? At Puma Pongku, we surmise that something like this happened here. The anomalies present here are so strange that they only make sense when you consider a technological site that was affected by an event like this in the very remote past. The scattering of the stone, the H-blocks for easy fitting and building, the magnetism still present, the grooves where some sort of metal brackets were once in place, everything suggests that whatever happened at whatever point in history, whatever took place happened suddenly, something like a Carrington type event. Maybe, just maybe. Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.